For the past few months, Delos has found herself sailing north along the amazing Brazilian coasts. We left Africa nearly six months ago, and it's been one hell of a season. But traveling for this long can take its toll, both on you and your boat. You start to think more about seeing family than that beautiful beach just around the corner. Things break on the boat, and the parts to fix it are nowhere to be found. And worst of all, you start to get complacent and make mistakes. We tried to capture this by showing you some of what went right and wrong during this time on Delos. Previously on Delos, we have an epic sail to Ilagrangi, swim with turtles, and meet our new friend Felipe. Oh man, can I hug him? Oh. <laughs> Good mornings. It is a cloudy, chilly, rainy day here in Brasil. Feeling really, I don't know, just peaceful right now and definitely feeling like I'm just exactly where I'm supposed to be. And that's, I mean, for me, that's the best feeling in life. One that's kind of hard to attain sometimes, but everything that's happened since I've came here, I, I could have never guessed, you know, I could have never guessed that me and Brady would turn into what we have. I think milk is always made for my friends, which are all, um, monkeys. Does that make me a monkey? Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm just really, really ready to continue on this journey and continue making cool things and sharing it with you guys. And when my first, my first episode just went out to Delos just to get such positive feedback from everyone on something that I've worked so hard on is one of the best feelings that I've ever had in my life. It's absolutely incredible. And it really, really makes me feel fully a part of Delos now. You know, I've been here for six months and of course I felt a part of it, but now it's just, it's different. It's on another level and I'm just feeling really thankful this morning. So, thought I'd share. It's not always easy living on a boat. There's always something breaking and it's up to us to fix it. What happened to our room? <laughs> <laughs> well, our autopilot uh, stopped working like a long time ago, actually. It stopped working in Ascension Island and I've been really lazy and we've been hand steering and liking it so I'm just now taking a look at it because senior Brady is heading back to Florida to visit our parents. Living in remote places is amazing and beautiful but it also makes getting parts near impossible. Once Brady booked his ticket home he was deemed the official mule and it was up to me to figure out what parts we needed to order. So this is the rudder transducer and as the rudder moves, it moves this little arm here, which then sends a signal to the computer, the autopilot computer, and lets it know the position of the rudder. And right now the autopilot has no idea of where the rudder is, and so it can't steer the boat. And so I looked it up online, and I found these measurements between the wires. From green to red, I should see 5,000 ohms in any position if the measurements are different here versus the uh, the computer and that way I'll know if the problem is with the transducer or with sort of the wires mm -hmm. in between. You have a nice little wig going on there too. Yeah this is where we keep our <laughs> Halloween costumes and various treasures that we've collected. 
Is there anybody up there to turn the wheel? I can turn the wheel. Turn it all the way to port. Okay, yeah, it's screwed. I'm getting not, no readings, so. We're gonna do one more test though. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this. And then I want you to go look at the rudder indicator outside and see if it's moving. It's still at two dots. Not moving. And it's not moving, no. Okay. You think we need a new one? Yeah. So I actually found the problem with it. This is what's happening right now. See how just that mm -hmm. inside part is supposed to yeah. turn? Like you that? see stuff, huh? Yeah, it's really tough. So we're gonna spend the $200 on a new indicator and hopefully that will fix the problem. And it will come back with Brady in about two so weeks. So. Alex and I are gonna fly back to Orlando and spend about nine, 10 days at home seeing my brother and my mom and my dad and just reconnecting recently I had, I've been thinking about my family a lot lately. One of the downfalls of sailing around the world is missing your family. Another is that we constantly live at the mercy of the weather. What's going on man? We're dragging man. This wind. Like hardcore. We used to be up there. How much does it blow? It's like a solid 30. I think it's gusting closer to 40 though. We still shouldn't be dragging in that. I don't know, like we didn't have enough chain out. So the plan now is just to move a bit further up and then drop anchor and just put out way more chain. Good that you noticed, Bri. Yeah. I would have I know, I just came out here to check things out and it didn't feel right. But we didn't hit anything. That's good. Okay, I think we have out like 60 meters now. That ought to be funny. Yeah? Because it's nine meters deep here. So nine meters plus two for the offset of the bow. That's 11 times 5 would be 50. So 5 to 1 scope would be like 55 or something. We had out 39 before, so when the wind came up, I just don't think it was quite enough. So after a few days of rain, it is sunny again, which means we are going on a hiking mission. We were taking the winding road across the island to the other side of Illa Grande. We heard rumors about a beautiful beach and an old prison. And our neighbors Beto and Thais were coming with. So Come excited. on in Google. So excited. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I you guys know anything about Illa Grande? Do you know any facts? Brazilian <laughs> say that it's the best place in Brazil. Really? Brazilian wow. Caribbean. Well, oh, okay. actually, Fernando de Noronha I think is the first one, but maybe Ilha Grande is the second one. So this is one. the second best. Yeah, the second island in the top five of Brazil. And the walk has begun. So it's actually a pretty sweet hike. It's not that much elevation change, but it's, it's the perfect. It's pleasant. <laughs> yeah. The dog needs water. Oh, yeah. How long have you been walking, guys? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Just check it. So we have seven more kilometers to go. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, wow. That's greedy. We found a fresh stock of bananas that's fallen over on the side of the trail. And Brian's gonna grab them. There's only one issue that it's in the, it's in the yeah, between highway. between us and the bananas is a massive ant superhighway. <laughs> Come on, bro! <laughs> that's such a small bundle too. <laughs> Good job, bro. A couple days we'll have ripe bananas. Success. I think they're gonna be delicious. Yep. Little sweet grenade. Muito one. Brasil. Muito Brasil. We've come across another ant super highway here. Senior Brady's on the case. Look at there's like a bunch of these winged 
They're like the queens. Whoa, these guys are crazy, man. They've got gnarly jaws on them too, man. Bro, they're all over your feet, man. No. Ah! 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 Made it. <laughs> Lisa has found something. Hidden a little ways from the trail was this awesome freshwater pool. The perfect place to take a cooling dip. First one in. Looks good, Google. But Brian wasn't far behind. It's cold. I can see everything's piecing together. It's gonna be fine. So fine. So fine. Looks like something here, huh? I see a sign. I wasn't expecting this. No. I wasn't expecting a school bus. We've been walking for like six kilometers of this dirt road. <laughs> yep, must be a little village over here. And what we've figured out so far, this is a secret cocaine production facility. Mm. And their storage unit is actually the abandoned prison, which we're about mm. to visit right now. Okay, so I'll go check it out. What do you think about that? I like it. I totally agree with you 100%. That was definitely a Brian fact. And I'm sure that's probably not true at all. Ilagranja had for quite a long time a very bad reputation. First, it was used by the pirates. Slave runners followed, turning the island into a center of smuggling after Brazil banned slave trading in 1831. During its heyday, it was up to slave labor to support the economy. There were even those who claimed that the island's owner was one of the largest slave traders in the region. What? Still, the island's darkest hours came as a prison colony. So, Blue, this place is known as the Alcatraz of Brazil. What? That's what I read. That's crazy. I think that's the prison down there. Ilagranja hosted some of the country's worst prisoners. Drug lords, murderers, and criminal masterminds crammed into maximum security cells. After a few escapes, the prison shut down in 1994. Where were you in 1994? Nowhere. What does imploded mean? <laughs> Blown up. This was blown up? Yes, it was. And I found this old video of the explosion. The yeah. prison has gone like this crashed in on itself. All that remains is a picture of a cow, what the prison used to look like. No. And imagine being stuck in this prison with this beautiful beach just a stone throw away. Sailboats will take you to some of the most beautiful places on the planet, but they also require a lot of attention. What are you doing it, Keza? Checking the oil. It's a little high, but it's just because Brian has uh, just changed the oil, so. And I feel a little bit too much. I personally think girls checking oil is pretty sexy. Not What do you mean, not Dirty spoon. That sounds hot too. Beto and Thais were having a problem, and since there's no emergency sailboat repair service out here, they did what you might do anywhere, call your neighbor for help. What's going on? We just got a message from uh, Thais that they have some problems with the cable and their prop. We don't know. So she was like, please don't leave now. <laughs> so the rescue team is set up. Brian and I, we are heading over. Maybe we can help. Let's see. They have four different problems, I think. Good. There was like the the dinghy line got caught in the prop, but then when that got sorted out, the engine oil alarm started going off. So then we checked the oil, and it was almost out of oil. So they've got a pretty bad oil leak. And we checked the transmission, and the transmission has like odd, like transmission fluid mixed with oil in it, which is a little bit weird. Oh, and then there was a dead battery. So they weren't able after we got everything sorted out, put oil in it. Oh. Everything checked, try to start it, and there's, the battery's dead. I was like, oh shit. But they're up and running, and uh, they're gonna call us on 68 when they're ready to leave. So did you talk to him about like all of this? Yeah, he, there's a bunch of oil under the engine. I told him he needs to pump that oil out, so I gave him a pump and an empty jug, 
because if there's oil under there, you have no idea where the leak is coming from or how big it is, right? So if he gets that all cleaned up, then he can look down there and see if there's like a lot of oil or a little oil or where it's dripping from, and then he can find the leak. And Delos was having some issues of her own. What happened? Oh, what happened? <laughs> Uh, I was running the water maker today and I was on my computer and I don't think I shut it off in time, so we had an overflow. <laughs> That's the only thing. It is fresh water, right? You, you yeah, tasted it. it was. The okay. water tank is like, whoosh, it like goes to the top. And, and unfortunately, yeah. there's water in all of these bilges too, except for this last one. It's <laughs> safe. But the good news is we get to clean the bilges now with fresh water because they were nasty with hair. We decided to do a bilge clean. Once you start, you just have to you get gotta it going. Do it. You gotta do a deep clean. It's first. been like six months since we actually cleaned the bilges, so. What are you getting over there? Oh, man. Check this out. Oh! Ew! That? Oh, no! <laughs> How long has that been oh. going for? Gross. Okay, Henry's can say. Okay. But they are all dry. And ready to go in the bilges again. Nice. You guys have fun and be safe, okay? Yeah. We'll do our best. Bye. Bye! Brady and Alex were on their way to visit family for a few weeks. And it was up to the girls and I to hold down the fort. And just like that, half of our crew has left us. We're gonna go to the beach and enjoy this sunshine. One of the most amazing things about this lifestyle is traveling with the comforts of your home, which is also one of the biggest drawbacks. Sometimes it's not easy to find an airport close to where we're sailing. We're going to Lopez Mendes. It's supposed to be the second most beautiful beach in Brazil and like the eighth most in the world or something. It's pretty beautiful. It's pretty nice. I do think we've been to about 37 of the top 10 beautiful beaches in the world though. But it's cool. It's nice. What do you guys think uh, Senior Brady and Alexandra Azul are up to? I don't know. Our plan was to continue exploring and meet Brady and Alex in Rio de Janeiro. So we're gonna do a two-person drive, one person on the man parts, and one person on the girl parts. Driving! Oh, trim that, trim oh. that trim. Woo! <laughs> Crazy. Crazy, Crazy crew. After so many months of sailing together, we're a well-oiled machine but now the machine was missing a few key pieces and we hadn't adjusted our plan yet. We lost Maggie. Uh-oh, 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 Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. He just looked back and noticed that Maggie is gone. Where is she? She's got a hug. Kick in the turbo, Kaza. Oh, I see something floating right in front of the ferry, right? Yeah. Shit. We're just hoping that nobody come up to her and snatches her. And now there is a power boat. Uh oh. Running towards Maggie. Hopefully, this is not what I think. Shit! Are you coming up there? Yeah. Now they are at the boat. Oh no, Maggie! Come on! I can't tell. I can't see it. They're going off. They are not at the dinghy anymore, but I can't see if there's anyone in the boat. Maybe they are towing her. I think they are towing her, Brian. They won't be able to hear us from here. Just keep on driving straight at them. We could have lost our dinghy. Oh, what a silly mistake. I mean, uh, we always have a, you know, there's a cleat in the back and the line must have just slipped off the cleat. 
I bet it's just hanging there off Maggie. I never ever happened. We just lost our car, like floating away. You can start to slow down now if you want. Do you want to drive it up to Maggie? It'll be good practice. Okay, go reverse. Nice job, Kaza. Well, that was nice. They put the anchor down for us. How about that? Did they drop the anchor? Yeah. Oh. How nice of them. These are still good people out there. Yeah. What do you think was the problem, Brian? How uh, was it on the cleat before? I don't know. I didn't check the cleat. All I did was pick up the line and clip it on. So I really should have checked it here. Oh, it's been yeah, like maybe. that for a while, but I don't know. You just get complacent sometimes doing the same thing every day. I think it's going to be all right, you know? Yeah. So <clears throat> it's Saturday today. It's uh, quarter past two. And while Brady and Alex are in the US and doing whatever <laughs> Brian's request was to have a spa and beauty day on Dallas <laughs> What's that? Chill with champagne It's gonna be a girls afternoon and I'm gonna get in on the the action here Well that sounds a little bit weird doesn't it? <laughs> Creepy Actually mm. By the way we got this from our friend in Brown mm -hmm. Homemade. I think he picked it from his backyard or something. It's just pure mud. Feels <laughs> <laughs> so good. This is a first for you, huh? It's like waiting in a salon. Aww. <laughs> Freak out. It's weird. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> You look like a schmetterling. A schmetterling. <laughs> you do this two times a month. Look like this. Seriously? In the yeah, it's fun. Look at Brian. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Uh. Look at you. One, two, three. What happened to my leg? Look at you. I want to be a pirate, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happened to my old thing? Uh, I just don't make them this. like they used to. This is like our last, our last bottle of South African champagne. Do you think that's okay? The mold around the cork. Do you see it? I think that's fine. I think it's fine too. <laughs> Isn't that the one we got from Br France? No, it's made in South Africa. Oh, okay. The first dedicated sparkling wine cellar in South Africa. <laughs> oh, shit! Okay, here we go. Crazy fact. We have been in Brazil for almost three months now. How many miles have we moved in the last three months? About 40? <laughs> Maybe 50. Not many. Wow. Usually we sail like almost a thousand miles a month or something like that. Like we met so many cool people and we've discovered food, drinks, like just a Brazilian way of doing stuff. So it's been really, really amazing. But we need to fill in some forms and go to the police. And hopefully they will give us another three months. Yep, our visas were about to expire. One of the benefits of this lifestyle is you get to visit an incredible number of countries. The downfall, of course, is that you're always a guest and always trying to find the easiest way to extend your visa. The city of Rio de Janeiro was literally just over the horizon. Most of the horror stories we'd heard about dealing with Brazilian customs and immigration originated in Rio, so our plan was to extend our papers just next door, in the city of Angra dos Reis. This is a bigger city, for sure, and it has a few different marinas, but I think the marinas are super expensive for some reason. Like, the one that is closest to the mall and stuff that you can buy food is about 250 US dollars per night, which is a bit hefty, I find. So I'm paying 250 dollars a night, that's stupid. Crazy. I like my chances on the hook. 
so we managed to find a nice anchorage here in Angra. Yes, you are in Angra. Oh yeah, yeah, all of these names. Um, I took a shower. We had some good dinner, and now we're preparing all the paperwork. How's it going, Brian? Requerimento de Paragaucho de Prazo. We go to the bank, pay the fees, fill out this form, cross our fingers, or hold your thumbs. Yeah. In Sweden, yeah. And we should be good to go. We've got our proof of money. Of We've got some documents I made up that looks makes Delos look legit. <laughs> First stop, the bank. First delay of the day. The bank does not open till 10 o'clock. He was very nice and he understood my my poor Portuguese. He just smiled and said, okay, sit over there. He's a gringo. <laughs> but we got the receipts. Yeah. Nice. Here, okay. here we go. Here we go now. Wish us good luck. Latest update. They are closed from 11 to 2 which means that because it's 10 40 now they don't want to start 20 <laughs> minutes before they close so now we have to wait three hours yeah look how good <laughs> brian is i it's do understand just, it's just stupid okay so we're gonna go and see if we can do some other stuff or find ourselves some entertainment what's going on now brian we found the Recita Ferral, which is the customs house, but the problem is before we can process the papers here, we have to do the visa because they have to know that I'm in the, allowed to stay in the country. So the federal police closed from 11 to 2. These guys closed from 12 to 1.30, but then open again. So I think if we're lucky, we might have enough time to go to the federal police, get it done, and come back here because these guys close it at four again. So it's like juggling everybody's <laughs> lunch breaks while walking around trying to get it done. Carne asada, con patata, feijo, y arroz, parapa. So we are checked into the... We got one thing done. <laughs> okay, so after a three hour lunch break, these guys are finally back. One, two, three. Ta -da! We did it. So right now we are the only people left here. <laughs> Look, they even closed like a door and shit. <laughs> but what oh happened? God, it's finally. I don't know what time is it. Four o'clock now. We finally got the last thing Yay. from the Recita Federal, which lets Delo stay in the country for another three months. That's it's amazing. like a, it's like a book piece. Wow, guys, that's awesome. Okay, now let's high go. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we even closed in. Like they just locked the door and shit. Next on Delos, we sail into the incredible city of Rio de Janeiro. Okay, go. <laughs> I put you on the wrong throat. <laughs> the wrong throat. <laughs> Sit still, don't move, or I might put it in your eye. Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Rio. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. Nice. So, like Brazil. Brazil? It's not Brazil, it's Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Start driving the boat, man. Girls are going crazy. <laughs> mm, you like it? I like it a 